Okay, so today we'll do another beginner's class, just like every Sunday. Um, as always, uh, you're welcome to connect on Instagram via Zoom. Everything, all the information is on in my bio. And then uh, if you cannot make it today or if you have to leave early for any reason, I will be uploading these videos later on on YouTube. So you already have videos on YouTube from the previous sessions. Uh, when it comes to the beginners classes, they're not necessarily for beginners, but we are dealing with things that are more basic, more of the foundations, which means that uh, we're going back to like, stripping down the poses and also understanding the engagements. We have already uh, talked about the locks, the bandas, and that's something that you want to have happening in your classes. So whenever you do a yoga class, you want to remember to squeeze the pelvic floor lightly, to lift up from the perineum, from the cervix for women, so that you have a deep core engagement. And then the stomach lock, where you're sucking lower belly in and lifting it up so that you stay strong and so that you protect your lower back, strengthening your lower back, lengthening your lower back in that way. So that's something that you should remember today also. And also the other thing we were focusing on previous weeks for the beginners classes, which also applies to all classes again, is breath. You want to breathe deeply, a long, steady, continuous breath. So you'll see uh, what works for you. It doesn't have to be the same length for all the students, but it's good if it's the same length for your inhale and your exhale. So you can have that idea of counting your inhale and counting your exhale and expanding your breath so that there's a steady breath as you inhale and as you exhale. It's not like in that way where you're exponentially breathing and then just smoothening it out. It's a steady inhale and steady exhale. Good, so we will be repeating these ideas, but today our focus is actually forward folds. Some people complain that, well, I cannot do yoga, I'm not flexible enough, but that's precisely why you need to do yoga, to find that flexibility. And my teachers, they always talk about active stretching where you want to find the flexibility through your strength. You want to engage agonist muscles so that the antagonist can actually stretch and you can feel that stretch coming from a place of safety, security and strength rather than the stretch compromising your body and pulling on your uh, joints. Good. Okay, that was the introduction. Now everyone is hopefully connected. You want to start at the front of your mat. We'll start standing up today. And right away, we will just allow our body to just fold down. Just allow the upper body to relax, allow gravity to pull it down. If you already feel some discomfort in the lower back, feel free to bend the knees because it could be that your hamstrings are quite stiff. If the hamstrings are stiff, they're going to pull onto the lower back and then you'll feel that stiffness. So bend your knees slightly, especially now that it's the beginning, and allow your body to just relax over the legs. As you see, you might be all the way up here, especially if you're not used to folding forward. I remind you, bent knees is always an, an option for today's class. So with forward folds and in general with yoga, we're focusing on the spine. We want to find a long torso, we want to find a long lower back. And in yoga, we see that we want to bring light to the spine. We are not talking about bringing light to the hamstrings. So feel free to bend your knees so that your hamstrings are a bit uh, less stretched. And you can just allow your body to rest over the legs. And then from here, remember those band engagements. So press down into the feet, big toe mounts, pinky toe, toe mounts, and heels, press down. And through that engagement of the feet, you feel that the legs are actually active. Your quads are working. 
your glutes are working. And then from there, find a pelvic floor lift. So think of your six bones, the body parts at the bottom of the pelvis, coming in towards one another so that the thin layers of muscles at the pelvis actually squeeze and lift up. And then find your lower belly, pull it in, pull it towards your floating ribs, the lower ribs, and then pull the floating ribs towards the chest. And that way you find some more length through your whole torso. These are the engagements I'll be repeating all the time. You want to think of the pubic bone, the pubis moving up in space in this um, current dimension we are. So standing up, think of the pubis lifting up so that then you pull the lower belly in and pull it down, the ribcage in and pull it down. Keep your knees bent and then slowly unroll. Come up. Very slowly. Keep those engagements, especially when you're coming out of the forward fold. You want that length. You don't want to just collapse on your lower back again. So make sure that you enter the poses, stay in the poses, and leave the poses with all these engagements happening so that you build the strength onto your lower back so that you're able to lengthen while keeping that integrity and keeping it safe. Bring your hands to heart center. Allow your head to bow down over the hands. Pull your shoulders back, your shoulder blades down the back. Relax the muscles of the face. Take a moment to feel the touch of your feet on the ground. Feel the support of gravity. There to hold you close. And from that feeling of groundedness, find the back of your skull and reach it up towards the sky. Keep pressing the feet down, keep reaching up through the back of the head. Relax the muscles of the face again. Relax your shoulders back, your shoulder blades down the back. And we'll start with chanting OM. Chanting OM is a great grounding exercise. It activates your parasympathetic nervous system which allows you to feel grounded, calm, clear. So let's inhale for OM. Shanti, please. Bring your arms by your sides, pick up your chest, your chin. Shivananda sun salutations. So inhale your arms forward and up, reach the chest up, the chin up, and exhale, fold forward. Remember to press the feet down and lift up through the pubis. Inhale the right foot back, push the hips forward and the chest forward, and exhale, knees, chest, and chin to the ground. Keep your elbows in. Inhale, slide forward, press into the feet, small cobra, and exhale, push the hands down, downward facing them. Inhale, the right foot forward, press the left knee down, push the chest forward, and exhale, come forward, fold over the legs. Press feet down and inhale, reach forward, reach up, and exhale, hands to chest. Again, inhale, the arms up. Chest up, open up the chest, push the shoulders back, and exhale, fold forward. Cube is up. Inhale the left foot back, left knee down, push the hips and the chest forward. And exhale, push with the hands to find the knees, the chest and the chin to the ground. Hips are up. Inhale, slide forward, cobra pose. And exhale, push with the hands, downward facing down. Inhale the left foot forward, the right knee down, push hips and chest forward, and exhale, come forward all the way, all over the legs. Press the feet down and inhale, come up, press the feet, pick up the chest, the chin, and exhale, hands to the chest. Okay, again, inhale the arms up. This is a great way to 
Wake the whole body up. Exhale, calm down. Inhale, rise the back. Push the hips forward. Open up the chest. And exhale, push the hands down. Find knees, chest, and chin down. Inhale, slide forward. Press with the hands. Push feet down. And exhale, push back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, the right foot forward. Left knee down. Push the chest forward. Pull the shoulders back. And exhale, fold over the legs at the front of the mat. Inhale, push to come up. You can always bend the knees slightly, remember. And exhale, hands to chest. Last time. Inhale, up. Chest up, chin up. And exhale, fold. Keep moving forward. Inhale, left foot back. Push hips forward, chest forward, chin forward. And exhale, push. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale, slide forward. Every time you can go a bit higher up with your cobra. And exhale, push back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward. Right knee down. Push the hips and the chest. And exhale, fold over the run of the mat. And then inhale, rise up. Chest up, chin up. And exhale, hands to chest. Okay, now that we're a bit warmer, inhale, bring your hands to your hips, open up the chest, and exhale, keep your hands there as you just move the chest forward. Try to keep your body straight and keep pressing the feet down. Maybe you stay higher up for this one, and then you can bring your hands to your legs or further down to the ankles, or maybe fingertips or hands to the ground. So again, it's normal if you cannot touch your feet at first when you try to do yoga. What you want is to think of the front of the body squeezing so that the back of the body can extend. So the front of the body are our agonist muscles, which are the muscles we are contracting, the muscles that we're activating, which means that you want to feel that the front of the legs are active, the kneecaps lift up, You'll feel that working if you bring the weight forward. So bring your weight forward. Feel the kneecaps lifting up to catch you from falling. The quads activating to catch you from falling forward. And then the front of the body, lower belly sucked in and forward, chest working, head relaxed. And the back of the body is just extending. So by squeezing the front of the legs, you'll feel the hamstrings stretching. Again, bending the knees, will give you some more length in the lower back. But that doesn't mean that you're not doing the stretch with the hamstrings. You're still stretching. So bend the knees if needed. Do bring the weight forward. So the quads working, the quadriceps, so that the hamstrings, the back of the legs, start to extend. Then suck the lower belly in. Think of the pubic bone pushing up so that then you can pull the belly in and down. Find this distance between your pubis and your belly button, reaching up through the pubis and reaching down through the belly button. Keep your ribcage in and lifting towards the chest and allow everything to pull you down. Again, the back of the body is extending. You can think of the six bones pushing down so that you find this length at the lower back. So six bones going down, and lower back extending, back of the body extending. So the body, the back of the body is relaxed and just allowed to expand. Think of the deltoid muscles, the trapezius at the top of the back, the upper back, just releasing so that you find some more length. Relax the head and breathe here for three. Two, again, you can bring the weight forward. Maybe you extend the legs a bit more. Maybe you reach a bit lower with the hands forward. Pull the belly in, inhale, halfway up. And exhale, bring the right foot back, the right knee down, and tuck the toes and push the hips forward. Runner's lunge. So bring, keep your hands outside the foot, pull your shoulders, back in space and shoulder blades down. Keep pushing with the hands and push your hips forward. Inhale here. 
and exhale through the mouth. Okay, inhale here. And then exhale, shift your weight back. You can walk with the fingers back. And you want to straighten the left leg. Point the foot and think, feel that, again, your, the, the top of the leg is active. So the quads are working and the back of the left leg is extending. Keep a micro bend on the knee if you're a hyperextending yogi. So I don't know if you can see it, I can actually push my knee down, but this is not the healthiest thing. So I want to keep this straight line, which means that I am micro bending my knee. If I consider completely bending the knee to be locking the knee. So I want to avoid locking my knee. Maybe you don't have this problem. <laughs> Maybe you cannot hyperextend, which is cool. But just have that in mind that if you are hyperextending, pushing the knee down is not ideal. Keep the knee at the same line with the leg and keep thinking of squeezing the front of the leg so that the back of the leg can extend. Inhale, pick up the chest, the chin, and then exhale, maybe you walk a bit further forward, but if it's too much, stay up. And breathe. Four, three. Again, you want to think of the six bones moving down so that you lengthen the lower back. Four, two. And you want to pull the lower belly in and up, is in and up, open up through the chest and lengthen the back of the body. Four, one. Bring your weight forward again. Bring the back knee in so that you have a right angle forming with the back knee, with the front knee. Press the feet down, pull the belly in, pick up the chest. Inhale, bring the arms up, elongate, stretch, and then exhale, twist, bringing the right arm to the front and the left arm to the back. Press down through the feet, through the back knee. If it's too much for the back knee, you can place a cushion or you can fold your mat so that you have some extra support for the back knee. Press the feet down, reach away through the arms in this twist. Keep thinking of grounding down your six bones, reaching down and lengthening your lower back. Keep the belly in, up and to the center so that the chest is opening, the shoulders are opening and you're finding this twist through the upper back. Inhale, pick up the chest, the chin, and exhale, maybe twist a bit taller. Inhale here, and then exhale, come forward. Pyramid fold, bring your hands down, bring the back foot, tag the toes of the back foot down, straighten both legs. So you want to have a distance of three feet between your feet, which means that this one foot, two feet, three feet, and then there's the, your foot. Traditionally in different schools, there's different foot positions. So for today, back foot can be at a 90 degree, and if it's too much for you for the hip opening, then you can bring the foot to 45 degrees. Press the feet down, pull the belly, pick up the chest, and if it's too much, come higher. You want both legs to be straight. This is again a forward fold, it's pyramid fold. So you want to think of sending the sit bones down, lengthening your lower back, picking your pubis up. So pull the pubis up to pull the belly in and up, and then send your pubis back as you reach your belly forward. So again, you want this distance between the pubis and the belly button. Press the feet down to keep the legs active. You want the left high to work again so that you feel the stretch at the back of the leg. You can stay higher up and you'll still feel the, the stretch if you're doing it properly. So keep pressing the feet down, you'll feel the glutes working. The glutes are stabilizing you, so glutes are working, thigh is working, hamstring is stretching. Pull the belly in and up, lengthen the lower back and from that length maybe you come lower. Keep thinking of the six bones grounding so that you lengthen the lower back. Keep pulling the lower belly forward as you push the pubis back. Hands to the thigh, to the shin or round. Inhale here, 
Exhale through the mouth, keep the engagement. Press the feet down, activate the glutes, the front thigh, inhale. And exhale, pull the belly in and forward, pull the shoulder blades back, relax the head. Good job. Slowly bend the front knee and bring the back knee down, knees, chest, chin. Knees to the ground, chest to the ground, chin to the ground. Pull the shoulder blades back. And inhale, slide into cobra pose to counter all of the uh, forward folding. And exhale, push to camera. We'll talk about back bends another time. There's also the Friday class that I teach, which is about back conditioning. So that will also work even like for all levels. Okay, in downward facing dog, we're taking five breaths. We will also find the forward fold engagements in down dog. So down dog is considered to be a forward fold in some schools, but uh, I prefer to think of it as an extension of the spine rather than a forward fold. Pressing the hands down, push the inner hands and the outer hands down, lengthen your uh, arms, lengthen your shoulders, so really stretch the shoulders, pushing the shoulders towards the hands. But then you want to widen the shoulder blades. So uh, external rotation of the arms, pulling the shoulders away from one another as you push the shoulders towards the hands, relax the head. And then find your forward fold engagements. So press inner feet and outer feet down. Send your heels back and feel how the front of the legs are squeezing in order to lengthen the, lower, the back of the legs. Slight bend of the knees is also possible. Keep lengthening the back of the legs. And then think of the six bones grounding down. Think of the pubis moving back in space and lengthen your lower back. Relax your head. Keep pushing into the hands. Keep sending the heels back. Keep sending the six bones down towards the feet and keep sending the pubis back as you pull the lower belly in and forward. Inhale here into a long lower back. Exhale through the mouth. One more breath, inhale. And exhale, keep pushing into the hands, sending the heels back and feeling the stretch at the hamstrings. Very good. Inhale the right foot forward, this time. Press the left foot down, bring the left knee down. Untap the toes and first find your runner's lunge. So push your hips forward, feel an extension of the left hip flexor. Take it easy. The less you go forward, the less uh, demanding it will be. So the more you want to feel it, the more you push the feet down, pushing the hips forward, pushing the chest forward. Press your hands down, pull your shoulders back, relax your head. There's no need to put extra pressure on your neck at any point. We are putting a lot of tension on the neck in our daily lives. So allow the yoga practice to redeem that. Relaxing the head whenever you have the opportunity. Good, and then bring the heels back, half splits again. So stay as up as you need to, point the front foot, send your pubis back, and feel that you're extending the bottom of the right leg. Keep squeezing the, the top of the right leg. Don't push the knee down unless you're a normal person and you're not uh, problematic like me. So if you don't need to um, worry about these things, then I guess that's one less thing to worry about. But if you can hyperextend, make sure that you're not pushing the knee down. Keep the leg long, keep thinking of squeezing the quad, squeezing the front of the leg, extending the back of the leg. Send the pubis back, pull the belly in and forward. And again, you can stay higher up or you can fold a bit forward. Inhale here, feel the back of the leg stretching. Exhale, keep sending your uh, pubis back. Pull the lower belly in, send it forward, inhale, and exhale. One more time, keep the leg active, keep the lower back low. Inhale into the lower back, and exhale, keep the lower belly engaged. Lower belly in and forward, and come to your, uh, 
your two right angles. <laughs> so front foot under the knee, back knee under the hip. Press down into all points of contact. If you need to, have something under the left knee. Press down, lift up. Tuck our belly in and up, send the six points down. Pick up the chest, inhale the arms up, lift up. And exhale, twist. So as you twist, remember to keep the hips square. Think of pulling the belly in and up and to the center so that then you're opening through the chest and through the shoulders. Pick up the head, reach out way through the arms, inhale deeply, and exhale, twist a bit more, gaze towards the back. Inhale here, press the feet down, pull the belly, lift up, and exhale, reach out way through the arms. One more time, inhale, open up the left chest, push the left shoulder forward, and exhale, reach out way through the right arm, reach back through the right shoulder. Inhale, come back to center, reach up, and exhale, bring your hands forward and straighten the legs for pyramid. Remember the back foot um, is a good three feet distance from the front foot. Keep the heel to uh, arch of the foot alignment. If you need to adjust, you can bring the back foot in and you can bring the foot to the left, back foot to the left for some more balance. And you're working towards these alignments, this straight lines. So press the feet down, straighten the legs, and you can again come up, rounding the sit bones, pulling the belly in, finding length, and stay as high up as you need to. Breathe in, and breathe out, keeping the lower belly in and reaching forward. Breathe in, press the feet down, feel the back of the front leg extending, and breathe out, keep squeezing the quad, keep pulling the ribcage forward to fold a bit forward down. Inhale here, and exhale, pull the shoulder blades towards the sacrum, relax the head, squeeze the front of the body. Inhale. And then exhale, bring your hands down, bend the knee, and come to knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, slide forward, cobra pose, press the feet down, and exhale, downward facing dog again. Five breaths in down dog, if you need to rest, bring your knees down and take those five breaths in child's pose. When we're beginning with yoga, down dog is a strong, difficult pose, then it becomes a resting position and then you understand how demanding it is and you make it an active resting position and it's not such a resting position anymore. So feel free to come to child's pose whenever you need to. If you're in down dog, be thinking of squeezing the front of the body so that the back of the body is extending, really pushing down into the hands, really reaching back through the heels so that the back of the body gets to extend, gets to stretch actively as the front of the body agonist muscles are squeezing, are engaging. Good job. You'll come to hands and knees. So bring your knees down if you're in down, and come to your hands and your knees. And then from here, bring your left hand to the center of the mat, pull the shoulder blades down the back, and inhale, bring the right arm up. And exhale, thread the arm under the left armpit and come to a twist. We can stay higher up or we can bring the shoulder all the way down and rest the head on the ground. Keep your hips over the knees. And then from here, think of the sit bones grounding down and think of the pubic bone reaching up towards the sky. Pull the lower belly in and forward and then reach your pubic bone back. Lengthen the lower back and exhale, pull the shoulder blades down, maybe twist a bit more, sending your left shoulder towards the right and sending your right shoulder towards the left. Pull the belly in, press the left hand down and slowly, carefully inhale and open up again, bring the right arm up all the way and exhale, hand to the ground. Change the hand positioning, so right hand to the center of the mat. 
right shoulder over the hand and inhale, open up, send your right shoulder forward, left shoulder back, and exhale, thread the left arm under the right armpit. Relax the head down or stay higher up. Keep your hips over the knees, pull the belly in and forward, send your pubis back in space. Breathe deep into your lower back. And exhale, maybe twist a bit more, sending your right shoulder back and your left shoulder forward in the direction where you're looking. Pull the shoulder blades down the back. Inhale deeply, pull the belly in and forward. And exhale, keep pressing knees down, feet down, keep the hips over. Press the hand down, right hand down, inhale, push to come up, open up again, and exhale, come down. Come to sit back, bring your feet to the side so that you can extend your legs forward. Sitting, seated forward fold, Basimottanasana. West side stretch. So send your six bones back, pull the belly in and bring your chest up. Once you find this length at the bottom of the body, your legs, then you can think of grounding the six bones down, sending your pubis back, and lengthening the lower back. So ground the six bones, lengthen the lower back. Activate your thighs. Keep your legs straight for this first one. Flex the feet. So press the heels down. As you press the heels down, you feel the quads working. If you relax, the quads are relaxed. So flex the feet so you can place your palms there and you'll feel it. Flex the feet, press the heels down, you'll feel the thighs working. Keep the legs straight, ground the six bones down and pick up the chest. Now, if this is already a lot, if you find yourself rounding back, if you can simply not like, sit up straight, then roll your mat or place a cushion under your six bones so that you find some height. So finding that height at the six bones, this is um, not very high, so you can roll it even more. So depending on where you are or place a cushion. What you want here is to find some height at the sit spots. So don't sit your whole bum on top of something, then you're not going to lengthen anything. Sit at the edge of your seat, of that um, cushion, whatever you create, if you need that. Flex the feet, press the heels down, feel the thighs working. Keep your legs straight, please. Pick up your chest, send your sit bones down, lengthen your lower back. Inhale here. And then exhale, think of the pubis moving back, the lower belly reaching up, and move forward. You can stay higher up and breathe. You're probably feeling your hamstrings stretch, and you also want to feel your lower back stretch. If it's too much, you are welcome to bend the knees. Remember, we want to build up a stronger lower back. We're bringing light to the spine. So make sure that your lower back is healthy. Feel free to bend the knees. You can even place something under the knees as a cushion to help. Lengthen the lower back and stay as far up as possible. Take five breaths as needed, as necessary, not as possible. <laughs> and then with your breaths, maybe your best take you a bit deeper into the fold. You will feel the hamstrings again and you'll feel the lower back stretching. If you feel any discomfort in the lower back, that's a reminder to really pull the lower belly in and forward or up, well diagonally up. So lower belly towards the spine and then towards the chest. And then moving the chest forward, pull the shoulder blades down so that you relax. It's not a forceful pull, it's just you avoiding this. You don't want a turtle neck. So allow your shoulders to move back in space and shoulder blades down in space towards the sacrum. Relax them and just keep the front of the body active so that you extend the back of the body in this forward fold. Relax your face. One more breath here, keep the feet active. Inhale and exhale, keep the quads active, keep the core engaged, keep the abs working. Press the feet down, inhale, come up slowly. Good job. Bring your knees in and open up your knees. We will be doing hips 
next week. Next week is dedicated to um, to open keys. So that will be fun. So don't worry about it too much right now. This is a forward fold. Focus on the forward fold. Don't worry about the knees coming down. Don't worry about opening the feet. Just keep everything strong, which means that you want to think of the hips coming into the hip sockets. And send your pubis back to lengthen the lower belly again. Inhale, pick up the chest. And exhale, fold forward. We're not doing rounding positions today. It's pure forward folds. So send your pubis back, pull the belly in and out. Sitting on that edge will help you, uh, but it's not necessary. So if you need to be a bit higher for the length to happen, sit on top of something with the edge of your sit bones. Pick up the chest and exhale, keep lengthening the lower back. You feel the hip stretch too, so take it easy, inhale. And exhale through the mouth, keep that length, and maybe come lower, maybe don't. Inhale. And exhale, keep lengthening the lower back. Think of grounding the six bones, sending the pubis back, and reaching the ribcage forward, lengthening the lower back. Inhale into a long lower back, and exhale, keep the engagements of the front of the body, lower belly, sucked in and forward. Keep that engagement as we press the sit bones down. Inhale, the hammer. And exhale, bring the knees together. Good job. Bring uh, the left foot forward. Flex the left toes, left foot. And bring the right leg out. So this is a combination of the two things we did before. Pasimottanasana and Badagonasana. So Badagonasana with the right leg and Pasimottanasana with the left leg. Send the pubis back. Pick up the chest, flex the foot. Inhale and then exhale. There's a slight twist happening, or at least an impression of it. Basically, you want to move your chest towards the foot, so not towards the center. So as you're opening the hip, if you're sitting up straight, maybe you're gazing diagonally. So you want to ground down through the six bones again, tuck the lower belly in and up, pick up the chest, gaze towards the left foot, and then reach your chin towards your left shin. Keep grounding your six bones on top of the cushion of your folded mat or on the ground. Keep grounding down to lengthen the lower back. Keep your chest proud, keep your shoulder blades relaxed. Inhale here, and exhale. Maybe fold forward, maybe stay higher up. Four, three, keep your feet flexed. Activate your left quad, lengthen your uh, left hamstring. Four, two more breaths. Keep the left pubis going back in space and pull the lower belly in and towards your chest. Four, one more breath. Keep pulling the shoulder blades down the back. Keep reaching the crown of the head forward. And then keep all those engagements as you inhale and you come up. And we'll switch sides. So bring the knee in. Legs together. Straighten the right leg all the way straight. And open up the left hip. Keep the foot to the inside of the right leg and ground down through the six bones. So where you place the foot, I'm just going to see so you can see, where you place the foot um, depends again on your hip flexibility, your knee might be higher up. These are all just fine, work with what you have. With time, you want the heel to be close to the pubes. So right in there, in the inner board. But if you're further away for now, and if your knee is up, stay with what you're working with. Keep the right foot flexed, squeeze your right thigh. Send your six bones down, send your pubis back, pull the lower belly in and up, squeeze in and up. Inhale into that integrity, that leg, and exhale towards the foot. You'll feel the hamstring working, you'll feel the back of the body working. As long as it's working, stay wherever you are for three breaths. You don't need to come down, it doesn't matter how it looks, it matters how you feel. Feel the stretch at the back of the leg as you're activating the front of the leg 
and build a stretch at the back of the body as you're pulling lower belly in and up, sending the pubis back. Four, two. And one, keep the body active as you inhale and you come up. And then bring the knee in and straighten the legs. Point the feet. Feel the front of the body working. Round the sit bones down and bring your hands back. Kick up the chest and lengthen for five breaths. Keep grounding down through the sit bones, lengthen through the lower back, and then pull the lower belly in and now pick up the chest or two. And one, very slowly. Keep that length in the body and move forward. Find a forward fold again. Feet pointed, four or five. Ground the sit bones down. Send the pubis back, four, four. Pull the lower belly in and forward. Lengthen the lower back, four, three. Relax the head, relax the back of the body. Keep contracting the front of the torso, four, two. Keep the thighs working. Legs up the back of the legs stretching. Pubis back, belly button forward. Four, one, keep that length between the pubis and the belly button and inhale, come up. And exhale, press the hands down, bring your hips in and come to lie on your back. Dynamic bridge, we're going to do some dynamic bridge to condition our body to counter all the forward faults. So press your feet down, pull the belly in, pick up the chest. And then from here, pressing down, grounding down through the heels. You inhale, posteriorly tilt to the pelvis and lift the pelvis up and towards your chin. Keep thinking of the knees moving away, chest towards the chin. And then exhale, bring the chest down and then the middle back, the lower back, and the sacrum. One more time, press the feet down, inhale. Start by lifting the pubis towards the sky and towards your chin, and allow the rest of the spine to follow. Make it an articulate, specific wave of the spine, and then exhale, bring your body back down slowly. Good job. Now we'll add the arms. So press the feet down, inhale, hips and arms up. And when the hips come all the way up, just like we are doing before, the hands will come to the ground all the way overhead. And then exhale, bring your hips down, bring your arms back up. And when the hips come to the ground, the palms will also touch the ground. So synchronize hips with arms. Inhale, come up. Chest to chin. Forehead relax. And exhale, come down. Upper back, middle back, lower back, sacrum and hands, come down. Three more, inhale. And exhale. Come back to that steady, even, continuous, deep, long breath. And do another three at your own pace. Keep your face relaxed. Keep the back of the body active now as you're stretching the front of the body to counter all the forward fold actions. Two more at your own pace. Go with it. And when you're done with your last one, there's no rush. You'll bring your knees to your chest and you'll hug your knees. Apanasana, wing removing pose. So from this position, you want to feel that you're lengthening the lower back again. 
This is again a forward fold in many ways. It's a child's pose. So you want to keep the knees together, push the knees towards the torso, but then remember to lengthen the lower back. So send your pubis towards the, to, away from your head. So depending on where you are. So send your pubis away from your chest and pull the belly in, send it towards the chest. Pull the shoulder blades towards the ground and away from the head and pull the back of the head away from the shoulder blades. Relax the face, inhale into the lower back again. And exhale, press the knees down and lengthen the lower back. Inhale into the lower back. And exhale through the mouth. Shoulder stand. So if you're new to shoulder stand, you can just do legs over the hips, keeping the feet pointed, keeping the legs active, arms by the sides. And you can breathe here. If you want a more passive, Inversion, you can place the legs against the wall and you can even place that cushion on your folded mat under the sit bones so that you come a bit higher with the pelvis and you have the pelvis over the heart, which is what will make it an inversion. So this can be all the way in the center of the room or you can do it against the wall. If you want to try supporting the upper back with your hands, uh, for a more classical shoulder stand. Then you're bringing your legs all the way back so that you have uh, access to your back. You use the hands to walk down the back, so towards your upper back. And then you want to place your palms all the way against your middle back. So not the lumbar, but all the way into the middle back. Walk the shoulders in, walk the elbows in, and then bring the legs up. So this is actually easier if you, can, you have the flexibility to bring the legs all the way back into Halasana Plow Pose so that you walk the hands up and then straighten the legs up. But even if you're not able to go all the way back, well, just use your core strength to lengthen up and then place your hands on the upper back. When you're first doing shoulder stand, it's normal for there to be an, an angle with the hips. And you want to extend the pelvis with time so that you really lengthen, you find this uh, straight line. It's also called candle pose. So think of a candle, the uh, more classical versions of candles with their handle. But then there's that straight line and then there's the wick at the top, flame at the top. Remember, if this is too much, keep your hips on the ground or support your hips with a cushion and have your legs straight vertically up. If you're comfortable, you can then close your eyes, inhale into your lower back and exhale. Keep your legs active, legs together, legs straight and reaching up towards the sky. Three more breaths and shoulders turn. And then slowly, slowly, you'll need to bring the feet towards the back so that your hips can unroll towards the front. So find that equilibrium, that balancing action so that you last down with control and you can use your hands for support. If you actually lift it into the shoulder stand, the full variation, then it's good to release your head with a fish pose. If you're legs are against the wall, feel free to stay with the legs against the wall for the rest of the class or to come back uh, to the mat and to do fish pose. So fish pose is optional, but if you actually lift it up so that you put a lot of pressure on your neck, then this is a good release, so it's highly recommended. So you lift up the hips just like in a reach pose, you bring your hands under your hips. You interlace your thumbs under the hips, and then you walk the elbows in and the shoulders in. You sit on top of the hands, 
you release the thumbs, palms on the ground, hands active, and then you extend the legs out, point the feet, pull the belly. So then you push down into the hands and into the elbows to lift the body up. So I'm pushing down with the forearms to lift up and then bring the head back and relax. You can stay up here, just feel the release, or you can allow the crown of the head to rest on the ground. Inhale into the neck, lengthen the back of the neck. And exhale through the mouth. Make sure your legs are straight, feet pointed, inhale into the neck. And exhale through the mouth. Keep your chest proud, keep your belly engaged, inhale. And exhale. Press into the hands, push down into the forearms to lift the head up if it's on the ground, then bring the chin in and allow your body to rest down. We'll finish with happy baby pose. Again, if your legs are up against the wall, feel free to stay there throughout. Otherwise, knees back to the chest, then open up the legs, flex the feet, knees at right angles. You can grab onto your shins and pull the knees closer, or if you want to be a more realistic version of a happy baby, grab onto your feet, soles of the feet, push down with the hands so that you again, Lengthen the lower back, sending the pubis away from the chest. If it's too much, remember you can grab your ankles or your shins. Keep the chest proud and exhale. Push your shoulders down, push your knees towards the ground. Lengthen your lower back. Inhale into the chest, flex the feet and exhale. Press the lower back down and send your pubis away. Lengthen the lower back. Good job. Just like a happy baby, you can choose to then extend one leg, bring it in, straighten the other leg, bring it in, maybe straighten both legs, do what you need to do, and then we'll come to lying on our back. Shavasana, corpse pose. The traditional indications are with the legs straight, feet splaying out, and palms facing the sky, opening up possibilities. You want to slightly tap the tailbone under so that you lengthen the lower back. If you want to find that, um, to make that easier to happen, then you can bend the knees, open up the feet, mat distance apart, and then bring the knees together. That helps you to find that posterior pelvic tilt that lengthens the lower back and feels comfortable for the lower back. So make sure that your lower back feels good, feels long. And then make sure that your neck feels long, so shoulders down, shoulder blades towards the sacrum, chin slightly tucked in so that the back of the neck is long and happy. Take a deep inhale from your feet to the crown of the head. Open the mouth and let it go. One more time. Inhale, scan your whole body, find any areas of tension, and then exhale, let that tension go, release. We'll finish our practice here in full stillness. Allow your body to be calm and still. Allow your mind to be free, your breath to be natural, your body to rejoice in full relaxation. You may remain the observer, watching the body from above, from within, from below, from all around. but detaching from it, watching the sensations, the feelings, the thoughts as if they're not yours. That allow, allows you to take a more objective stance on where you are, so that you receive all the feedback from the body, so that you learn more about yourself, more about how your body 
tends to feel and function, how your mind tends to feel and function. So keep that distance, watch, learn, and above all, relax and enjoy stillness. place of comfort, peace, tranquility. And when you're sitting down, again, ground your six foot down and lengthen up through the back of the skull to find a long back and a long neck to find a proud chest. Breathe into that proud chest. And breathe out through the nose, allow the practice to find its place in every cell of your body. Bring your hands to your heart. Inhale for Om. Om. Namaste. Good job, everyone. Good job. Strong practice today again. A lot of engagements happen for the forward folds to be safe, but these exercises will help you to get to your feet if that's what you want, or go deeper, or 
or go safer, which is always a good thing. So stay curious, stay active with all the stretches and stay present with your practice so that you learn more about your body and so that you nurture and take care of your body in the best way possible. I wish you the very best. And if you have any recommendations, any requests, I'm here. Have a beautiful um, day, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this. Take care.